Hey everyone, and welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're gonna to be going through a getting started with D2C Commerce. Now this is actually gonna be a little bit of a, a spin back here because the very first video I did on Commerce Clouds was getting started with B2B Commerce. So now that we've uh, gone a long way with B2B Commerce, we're gonna kind of focus in on D2C for a little bit. So this will be a start of kind of a, a mini series of some D2C specific content. Uh, so in this video, in less than 15 minutes, we're gonna go from a brand new store, uh, setting up all the things we need to with checkout and using managed checkout, all the way to actually ordering for the first time. So stay tuned, we're gonna be going through each one of those uh, pretty fast, and then in future videos, we'll break those out. Let's get right into it. All right, <clears throat> we're in the Tiny Homes B2C instance right now, but we're obviously gonna be starting with a new storefront, as I mentioned. Uh, we've got a ton of templates, but uh, we're going to be using our D2C template. Uh, and we'll keep the standard uh, basics right there, and we'll move right into creating our store. So we've got our Salesforce Mojo uh, D2C store, and we'll give it a URL path here. And we'll let the kind of start selling uh, go forward from there. And once we've done that, we have a store now. That's that easy to create a store. And uh, one of the first things we uh, are going to do here is to brand our storefront. And uh, thankfully, uh, we have a little bit of an assist with this. So we're actually going to put in our brand, which I plan to use our Salesforce Mojo uh, website to do that. You can see that once we do that, it's actually going to pull in our Salesforce Mojo logo and some of our brand colors. Uh, we want to make a couple of more changes to the actual brand color here. So I'm going to hop over into my Salesforce Mojo site. And I've got a, a Google uh, extension that I'm going to use to pick up the color of um, the font I use right here. So we're gonna grab that hex code and we're gonna go back over into our store if I can find the right tab here. And we're gonna just replace that with our brand color right here. And uh, once we've done that, we, we have the basics of our color and logo in here. Uh, I'm gonna make a couple of changes to the content just to kind of show you how easy it is to make these changes. You know, in a production site, we'd obviously uh, be doing a lot more editing of the content, but as you know, the objective here is to go from uh, you know new store to order as quickly as possible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and couple make a couple of these content changes, but not a ton. And once we've actually uh, made this change here, uh, we're actually going to publish our site. That's going to be um, one of the requirements in order to get the site uh, up and running. And so. Uh, what we'll actually do is go over and on the right hand side there you can see there's a publish button and a save button. Uh, in this case we're going to click publish and uh, that will allow us to make all the changes. And you notice that we've done all this from our commerce app and we haven't hopped over into experience builder yet. Uh, at least for this uh, sample here. And now that we've done that the next step we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a product. Um, so let's go ahead and click new and we're in this editor here. We've kind of got this left and right um, pane here. On the left hand side we can make edits to um, new products. On the right hand side we can see what those will look like in our store. Uh, and so in this situation let's call um, our first product live B2B training. Um, that's That could be kind of one of our courses that we train off on this uh, demo site here. And we'll mark it as active and let's give it a base price of $500. Uh, and once we've done that we will add it to a category um, in the you know Again, we don't have all the categories we would in a production site, and we also don't have images on this product, um, just on the sake of kind of uh, going as quickly as possible here. But let's give a little bit of a description here just to put a little meat on the bone as far as uh, what this is going to look like in our site. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and click Save, and that will um, give us an active product that we can use. And once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and go over into settings and I'm going to go into search just so that we can kick off the search index. You know, it is automatic, uh, but I want to make sure that it kicks off as soon as possible so that we actually have a product in there when we're ready to, to use it. All right, so now that we've done that, we'll move over into checkout. So my intention here is to use Manage Checkout. Uh, that'll let us move this through really quickly. And uh, Manage Checkout uses Salesforce Payments. And Salesforce Payments behind the scenes uses Stripe. And so what we'll be doing here is setting up uh, our Salesforce Payments uh, merchant account here, which we'll call Salesforce Mojo. And let's call it uh, like test store. So we make sure it's a test account here. And we'll click add. And then it's actually going to kick us over into uh, a Stripe um, setup and verification. 
Uh, so once this uh, loads, it'll kick us into activating our merchant information. And once we uh, add our information here, this is when it's going to connect it into our Stripe account. Now I've already done this on a couple other storefronts. I already have uh, an account in kind of this test mode with Stripe. Uh, so I'll put that information here. And uh, a lot of this is like partial true information, partial not. So a lot of it is going to uh, be uh, stripped out um, as you kind of see the next couple of screens here. But if you ever do this, the information here is really basic. It's just like setting up a, a normal Stripe account. Uh, so there's nothing super personalized um, with this setup here. Uh, we're going to move through the next couple of steps here um, pretty quickly. And I'm just going to kind of speed up um, as we as we keep going through this. Now, while I finish going through these setup steps, if you've been watching the channel for a while or this is your first time, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help uh, make sure that the videos get out there and more people are able to find it. Uh, if you like the content, feel free to also like it. It does help me giving you some feedback on what you guys like and don't. Uh, also, feel free to put any comments uh, down in the videos. I, I try to go and look at those and respond as I have time. Okay, so now that we've gotten through those setup steps, uh, the next piece here is selecting our payout account. So in this situation, I'm gonna be using the test institution. Uh, in a production situation, you'd be connecting to, you know, whatever institution you plan on receiving payouts to. Uh, it's gonna be one of your banks. Uh, but sales, sorry, Stripe makes this easy uh, with test institutions when you're in test mode. So really all I have to do is link this to uh, my account here that I've already logged into and when we actually capture funds through our storefront, they will go to that test institution. So you can kind of mock the full life cycle of uh, being able to capture payments as well. So we'll select this uh, first Stripe bank here. And once we've done that, we will move into uh, the statement uh, setup here, which really you'll never see in this situation because uh, we're in test mode here. Uh, but it asks you to fill in some customer support information and some other pieces that are required during the Stripe uh, merchant account set if you've done that in a non-Salesforce uh, context. So once we do that, uh, we will review uh, the information, make sure that everything's verified. I actually have one more thing I need to go and select just uh, around the industry here uh, to make sure that that is filled in. But once we've done that, we will have completed our merchant account setup. Uh, and this will allow us to connect our store in, sorry, our merchant account into our store. So now manage checkout is in a restricted mode here, which is uh, where it'll stay in kind of a test account. But there are a ton of different payment methods and you can see that as we, we get in here, there's Apple Pay, there's Klarna, there's PayPal, and there's other options as well. Uh, and these give a, a, a lot of uh, options depending on where you're uh, deploying your storefront. So we'll just add a couple of these for now. All right, now that we've done that, we are going to go over into our store and we just wanna do a quick check through on uh, who actually has access to the store. So we can go over into buyer access. We see we have a buyer group there, but we also can see that uh, guest enabled is set up with self-registration. So what we can do is we can hop back over into our general settings and we can grab that URL. So this will be the URL that we'll be using to uh, test this out. And when we uh, load that, we should see our storefront. So we can see the changes we made. And if we go into products, we can actually see the product that we had created. Uh, although right now it says the price is unavailable. Uh, so I think I actually know uh, why that is. Uh, if we go back to our store home, we can see that we've done all the steps for activating it now. So we'll go ahead and click activate on here. And that'll flip everything over to be uh, ready to actually be uh, viewed. And so now if we refresh our uh, store, we should see price come across and we should be able to add to cart as a guest user. And it looks like that is working correctly. So now if we move into checkout, uh, we should be able to see the manage checkout experience here, uh, which allows us to move through this very quickly. Uh, we'll go ahead and put in some uh, information for our email and for our phone number. And once we do that, we uh, should be able to enter in a shipping address here. So I'll go ahead and put my name in and I'll put in my address, uh, or I should say I put in a fake address here, but it doesn't like the, the mission ad uh, street for some reason. So I'll go ahead and just type that in uh, here. And once I go into shipping address, I should be able to see a shipping uh, option, but it looks like for some reason I'm running into an error here. So I'm gonna try this one more time here to see if that was uh, the issue. 
So I'm going to go ahead and open up inspect here just so I can see what's going on in the back end, which is, you know, a good uh, practice. If you are um, in the process of building a storefront, you can see a lot more in your uh, network experience here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, that information again and go ahead and go into shipping address and see if I can identify what the issue is here. And it looks like it's complaining about a country from the dropdown. Um, although sometimes these errors are uh, misleading or they don't say exactly what the underlying issue is. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into uh, setup here. And I think there's a couple of options that uh, we can flip across uh, in order to um, hopefully fix this. All right, so I think uh, one of the first things I need to do is just check uh, all the checkout settings. And it looks like we do have a shipping method, uh, which is required, so that should be fine there. Uh, one of the things I didn't check, though, was taxes. So I'm gonna go back up into the tax section. I'm gonna select a tax category here, uh, which should give us the ability to uh, flip taxes on with our Salesforce payments capability. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into payment methods. I'm gonna remove uh, Apple Pay and Klarna. Uh, because uh, the Stripe Salesforce payments is restricted right now and not fully set up, I think it's probably gonna cause issues that those are on the storefront. So we'll go ahead and click remove on that. And now that we've done those two steps, we'll hop back over and check out and we'll refresh and see if we can do this one more time and if we'll let us through. Uh, and yeah, it already looks like it's promising, so it pulled up shipping method. Uh, we'll put in a credit card number here. That's uh, one of the test ones. And actually, um, the 433 uh, is not one that is going to be valid. So we're going to have to switch this over to 4242. Uh, that'll be a valid uh, credit card number that we can use in kind of a testing stripe mode uh, situation. We're going to go ahead and put in our expiration date here and our CVV. And if everything works correctly, we should see an order confirmation here. And it looks like we do. So we got MD3UK. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hop back over into our storefront in the back end here and I'll look at orders and yep we do see an order there and just to verify everything worked correctly we'll go into order payment summaries uh, and we do see that we have an order payment summary and we have a payment record for 500 uh, which is awesome it's exactly what uh, we expected to see there all right and that's a wrap uh, we've done this in a little under 20 minutes uh, set up an entire site uh, thanks for watching feel free to put any comments or questions you might have down in uh, this video thanks for watching